In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your NVR for remote viewing of your security camera system in six easy steps. I'm Jorge Ramirez with Safe and Sound Security, the place where professionals turn for security system information and solutions. Today, we're gonna to walk you through the steps you need to take to get started with NVR remote viewing. Viewing your security cameras remotely is a critical part of surveillance. Your security camera system is designed to protect your premises 24 seven, especially when you're not there. Even if you've got a video monitoring company helping out, most people still wanna check in on the system or be notified if a problem arises. If you wanna keep tabs on your business or property no matter where you are, you'll love this video. Keep watching. After following just six steps, you'll be able to access your security cameras remotely. First, you'll need to understand your network. Then you'll set up DDNS. Next, you'll need to set up a port forward and then you'll assign the DDNS host name to your NVR. Lastly, you'll set up two IP addresses for your NVR and verify that both local and remote viewing work. So let's get to it. You'll need to know the basics about your network before you can set up your NVR for remote viewing. First, you need to be able to access your local area network or LAN from the internet, which is a wide area network or WAN. Your devices connect to the internet through your gateway router, which is assigned two different IP addresses, one on the LAN and the other is on the WAN. Your router's local address will generally be 192.168.1.1, depending on your service provider. Any devices connected to your router, whether smartphones, computers, tablets, NVRs, or other devices, are assigned a different last number at the end instead of one. Under normal circumstances, these addresses can only be accessed locally. The WAN address can either be static, which is typical for large businesses, or dynamic, which is typical for residential use and small businesses. Dynamic addresses are rotated by internet service providers for both security purposes and power fluctuations. Because its WAN address changes randomly, any web service attempting to visit your network needs either constant manual updates or a static nickname to call. Now that you understand your network, you can move on to the next step, which is setting up DDNS. Setting up DDNS, which stands for Dynamic Domain Name System, gives your network a nickname so you can reach it even when the IP address changes. This is done through a DDNS provider that associates your network with a customized nickname. So you'll give your router a static URL that's linked to its dynamic WAN address. This allows you to access your network from an internet browser or smartphone app. After you have your DDNS set up, you'll need to set up a port forward. Port forwarding assigns specific ports on your router to a device on the LAN. This directs any traffic requesting those ports to that device, which is your NVR in this case. Without port forwarding, you can't specify a device on your LAN to visit. Ports are forwarded by logging into your router on the local network via its IP address. Next, you need to assign the DDNS hostname to your NVR. Assigning the DDNS hostname ensures any web service that requests that hostname will be automatically routed to your NVR. In your NVR's network settings, you'll have to enable DDNS and enter the credentials for the hosting site, which are the username, password, and hostname. Now you're almost done. You've got two steps left. Next, you need to set two IP addresses for your NVR. The reason you have to do this is that there is a catch to all the routing hoops you have to jump through to remote view your NVR. You can't view the remote security camera feed when you're on the local network. Setting two IP addresses is a workaround for this. If you're using a mobile device, you'll have to enter your NVR as two different devices with separate IP addresses. The username and password will remain the same, but you won't have to enter the ports for the local connection. So when you use a smartphone app, you'll only have to fill in the NVR's credentials once, but you'll have to set two IP addresses for your NVR. The first one will be the local addresses you can access when you're in range of your home or business Wi-Fi. The second one will be the IP address you'll connect to when you're remote viewing your security cameras. You'll also have to switch on and off the wireless network manually. Finally, you're ready to make sure everything is working correctly and begin remote viewing. Once the network itself has been configured, you can log into your NVR from any internet connected device. Logging in from a computer is usually as simple as entering your DDNS hostname into an internet browser and using the NVR's username and password to view your feeds. On a smartphone, you'll need to use a compatible app to connect to your security cameras. Once you enter the credentials into your app, you'll be able to see your live feeds and save footage from anywhere you have cellular signal or Wi-Fi access. Once you complete these six initial setup steps, viewing your cameras remotely will be simple. 
You'll be able to keep a close eye on your property wherever you are, which both increases security and gives you peace of mind. If you liked this video and it helped you learn more about setting up your NVR for remote viewing, make sure to like the video and click the subscribe button below. If you'd like to browse some of our written content or have a security project you'd like to talk to us about, head over to GetSavingSound.com. And now, I'd like to turn it over to you. Do you have any comments or questions about NVR remote viewing? Let me know by leaving a comment below right now.